the foundation of grace there is no way you can talk about greater grace when you don't know about the foundation of grace and there is no how you can talk about a house without a foundation and any house that is built without a foundation has the capacity to collapse in less than 60 seconds the Lord is about to teach us the foundation of how grace was bettered and how grace became in view and how grace become a living entity and how grace become a dispensable system that alter your life and my life with a clap innovation welcome the Holy Spirit welcome the Holy Spirit is greater than the greatest is higher than the highest is bigger than the biggest is 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 is, is mightier than the mightiest can you celebrate the ministry of the Holy Ghost thank you father for in Jesus precious name we worship what is grace I'd like you to quickly write down what is grace grace is a system that brings a common man into the level of intimacy with God grace is a system that brings the common man into the level of intimacy with God it's just like a man a man that has grace when you see the fixed core appearance you don't need to tell i'm a man of grace there is a flavor that flavors you anytime you come out you might not be dressing with the most expensive thing but you are the one that people will be looking at you might not be the richest man in your local government but it is you that they will see Grace make a man a common man a show. Grace make a man who is written off to be right about. Grace make a man who is a destitute to become a headline. Grace make you who that was neglected yesterday to become a celebrity today. So when you are talking about grace, grace is that flavor that removes every calamity and shame from the life of man it's a system when the grace of god is upon you everything that they said concerning you yesterday everybody will forget now 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 everybody will forget it let anini repent now anini will become a pastor his name anini will be removed there was another anini in the days of the bible his name was called Saul, who later found grace and his life was transformed nobody called him a murderer but he became an apostle i kept a prophesy anyone that want to spread your name in this month of grace as you have received the four times of the intimacy of god i came that his name at the volume of the book anyone that want to molest you they will end up celebrating you they will end up celebrating you in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost somebody holla Christ once a man finds grace in the sight of God that man automatically be a multitask human as God please take note of this when I say and that Unadi is a man of grace, he will do things like God. It's not a mechanic, but you will know what is wrong in your engine. You are not a mechanic, but you will be directing mechanic on what to do. Grace opens you up to a level that you don't know. Grace brings the deep insight about the spirit of God into your life. In other words, grace is what power near everything every gift of the spirit into reality and into view when you have grace when you find grace in the sight of god everything about human there will be nothing that will be hidden from you everything about human being everything human creates you will be the one dissecting it as if you are the author of that thing do you know why 
the one that gives you grace is the one that authored the earth. So when you are talking about the earth, you'll be talking as if you are the author. In other words, grace is what makes you an author when you are not an author. It makes you an author when you are not an author. When you are talking, you talk as if you are a God, but you are not God. But what is at work in your life is grace. You see things the way God sees things. So when you say that this man is a man of grace, in other words, he's a man of God. He's a man that behaves like God. No man carry grace and talk stupid. No man carry grace and be ridiculed. No man carry grace and they will lock you somewhere and your light will not be seen. One of the greatest prayers we are going to be praying in this month of grace is Lord, let your grace be seen upon my life. Because when the grace of God is seen, any man that wants to ridicule you, they will look at you and begin to diss another thing concerning you. Any man that has made up your mind to sell you, to the way they sought to sell to the party, they will begin to look at you and say, no, instead of us to sell this man, let us push them forward. I want to interpret this. When you are a man and a woman of grace, all your enemy, they are not the person that push you forward to make it on time. I'm not talking to somebody here. Your enemy, be, they, see, God will program them. Be at my back. Be at my back. Begin to push me. Begin just to push me. Grace has already, grace has entered me. Instead of my enemy to push me to error, they will push me to make it on time. I came to pray for somebody here. And they want to, want to molest you. Uh, as you find grace in this month of grace, uh, they go push you, make you make her quickly. Uh, Cover is in fire when you find grace. Every man that is holding a negative meeting in your family, they will begin to make I don't want to speak this. They will met before the presence of God. I came to prophesy in the similitude of God giving grace. After today, no look at just one. My God will grace you. Let me tell you this. A man with anointing can be sick. A man with power and authority can be molested. But you can't molest a man with grace. You, sir, <laughs> can, let, let's go into scripture so that you will be able to know where I'm talking about. Let's go into scripture. Please, program me to the first scripture for you to know who you are. First Corinthians chapter number 6 verse 20. Look at what the Bible said. Concerning, concerning first Corinthians. Chapter number 6, verses 20. He said, he said, for, he said, for you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. When you are a man of grace, you do things like God. Because why? There was an embodiment which they used to buy the component in the realm of the spirit. And that component was called grace. And when you find that grace, you talk and reason like God. He said, now, all you need to do, he said, glorify God with your body. How do you glorify God? You glorify God by your physical ability. You glorify God by your emotion. You glorify God by your intellectual. You glorify God in spirituality. It has the reason why the Bible said, He that must worship God must worship Him in the truth and the spirit. I came to pray for the church. Anywhere you miss your spiritual life, I am here in this month of grace to shower blessing upon you. Just like the way I know my name, as it was written in the volume of the book. Anyone that can give God the victorious seminar, I said the king will hear of your story. Can I tell you this? The greatest announcement in the life of a man is called grace. So when you find grace, even though you are in the babish, if, now, even though you are in a place, potopoto, amen, you will turn a potopoto to paradise. A desolate land will be transformed to become a paradise. Reason is because you have found grace and the way God reasoned, when things are destitute, he said, I will make you to build the broken bridges. It is grace that will make you break the broken bridges. It is grace that will make you use the desolate land to become an attractive center. 
grace. A man of grace, I say again, cannot be sick. But a man of power authority can be sick. Go and read God's general. All the men that exercise power, all the men that demonstrated power, many of them died in drunkenness. Some died by sickness. But have you ever seen that Jesus died by sickness? Even when Paul was crying, oh my God, this issue I'm sick. And the Lord said, you can't be a man of grace and you are praying this prayer. My grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. Now, let me open your eyes to that deeper revelation. Isaiah chapter number 9, verse 6. Foundation of grace. Isaiah 9, verse 6. Please, the foundation has begun. Please look at it. He said, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder please i'd like you to follow he said and his name shall be called wonderful counselor please underline the mighty god please oh please oh listen to him <laughs> he said an everlasting father the prince of peace now ask yourself a question we were told that we have one god but when a child is to be born, he said that we call him the mighty. Then they see two kings. <laughs> Have you ever seen two kings? But in this kingdom, kings exist. Kings exist. My son is coming. Because he's coming, I will give him what I carry. So that the whole earth will begin to see him as I am. Picture this, picture this. When they finish this aspect, I'd like you to post this scripture in your heart. Have it in your heart. John chapter number 1, verse 13. John 1, 13. I'd like, I'd like us to see something. Look at the sixth term carefully. He said, ah, my father, please help me here. Please help me here. John 1, 13. He said, which was born, not of blood, unto us a child is is born and unto us a child was given now the child is about to be better look at how it was better which was not born not of blood nor the will of flesh nor of the will of man but of god so you are not here by the will of man you are the will here by the will of god because you are here by the will of god you will fulfill my death in a grass ah. this can we can we move on 14 look at what the bible says look at what the bible said he said the world was made flesh and it dwells amongst us and we behold his glory to glory as the only begotten son of the father full of grace and truth now when you take me back to Isaiah chapter number nine verse six it talks about one word he said and the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder the sixth time that god used to bring the government of this world upon his shoulder was called grace if you carry grace you control the government ah! do you know why fear me lord till i overflow na, 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 na. shall be called the mighty God watch take note of this it take a God to carry the government of the show of the of the world so the system God used to pioneer that word into reality was called grace 
Look at it. He said he was full of grace. But in Genesis chapter 8 verse 6, he said no I found grace. But in the time of Jesus, he said he was full of grace. One labor for it, the other one did not labor. was the only begotten he was the only begotten son of the father full of grace so when the bible began to call his name shall be called the mighty god the counselor the wonderful everything about him was trapped in grace when he was wearing the regalia of full of grace all that controls about the world the key was given to him a man of grace is a controller general not a minor that's the reason why it is written. That's the reason why it is written. One with God is a majority and not a minority. You want to operate in grace? Follow me as I follow Christ. And you begin to see things working. He said his name shall be called the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Now let's take another one again. He said his name shall be called Everlasting Father. Now, ask yourself a question. We only know of God, one God, but another one is coming again, his son. He said, everything that belongs to me belongs to him. Every good father leave inheritance for the children. Can I tell you? God understood that I have reigned too much. Let my son shine. Now, good papa, eh? Go buy property, buy property, buy property. He go tell and say, papa, you know they say, go say no. I won't live on for my children. May they know, say I try. Amen. So the only time where God looked at him and said, how can I, Jesus come? Why? You are my son. Anything I possess in heaven, possess it on earth. That's the reason why God, when Jesus was here, nobody disturbed heaven. Did you get that? When Jesus was already found in earth, nobody disturbed heaven anymore. Everything about heaven was now embedded in him. Why? He said the government of this shall be upon so anywhere he goes they see him as the president general he goes crowd is moving with him he goes multitude he goes when he bless two loaves of bread and five fishes if i'm not mistaken right take note of this it was grace that multiplied it was grace that did what the secret by the system by her multiplication is grace. We are not the only church in the well road. But can you see what God has used us to do? I say this without, without I don't want to, we don't need to argue. Many a time where they count offering is 50,000. Plus tight sometimes we have 80. Calculate how much 80,000 can do in this building. That's the finger of God. In the midst of nothing, something is happening. He is the God that turned me to, to become. So when a man found grace, everything about that man was done. He, in Genesis chapter 8 verse 6, the Bible said, And Noah built an ark. How did he build the ark? If you see the bigness of that, it's bigger than this church. He built the ark, he started putting animals inside and the family, and the rain came. Let me tell you, grace is another system that preserves a man when a disaster is about to happen. Amen. He said, unto us, a child was given. And the government of this world shall be upon his shoulder. Why? Because he is a man full of grace. But can we, can we go a little bit further? Program me on that John 1, 13. This is number 14. John 1, 14. I want to explain a little thing to everybody here. Please, I'd like you to see this. He said, And the word was made flesh and he joined us amongst us, and we behold the glory to glory as the only begotten Son, the Father, full of grace and truth. Program me in John 8 32. Please, when he said he was full of grace and truth, look at it. Look at another word here. Now we've explained grace. Now we want to bring the two things that we make grace to work in your life. 
if you don't know the foundation of grace you will be missing out now he said it was full of grace and truth we cannot teach grace without leaving this component if not you will be hearing the word grace you will not be a partaker he said and he said and yes shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free in other words grace is a maker truth is what make you a pathfinder Do you know what I mean here? When, when Jesus met Peter at the seashore in Matthew chapter number 4 verse 19, he said, come, follow me and I will make you. Any man that found grace in the sight of God, that man has been made by God. So when that man meets another man, that man is not a maker like God. So anytime you are in a place and you carry grace, whoever that submit to you has already submit to grace. Ah! Please, let's feature this. Let's feature this. He said, He that must worship God must worship it in truth and in spirit. When you have grace, the vehicle that transports you far in grace is truth. If a man of grace start lying, that grace will depreciate. You will be in a place the thing will not work. Because we only treat grace, we live truth, but we must treat the both together. Let's look at the scripture carefully. I'd like you to flash me, take it back to John 1, 14. I want to open your eyes. That word, truth, here. Do you know what that word, truth, means? When you are full of grace, you must be full of this word. John 17, 17. It says, sanctify them with truth. For thy word, for thy word is what? Sanctify them by what? Truth, the truth. It says, sanctify the truth, the truth. The word is truth. In other words, when you give your body, soul, and spirit to the word, you become a grace carrier. Let me tell you the truth. Let me tell you the truth. A lot of people, many a time, I'm not against this. People want to go to meet man and kneel down before man. Oh, sir, I, 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 want, I want to tap of grace. I want to tap of grace. Can I tell you a secret? You can go to that man and he will lay hands on your head. Nothing will work. Amen. Yes, nothing will work. Do you know why? You only, you only went there by the leading of the flesh. But when you are a custodian of the world, you know where to do or where to act to tap that grace that you went to meet man to lay hands on. Ha! Hey, can I say this? Can I say this? Who did Apostle Paul meet? That lay hands on him that make him what do you know what he did he read this crew he read this crew he read this crew he read it. the only person that i saw that minister to him was agabus when he was about to die another man again was ananias when he was blind he always said god sent me here to come and open your eyes because the ministry has given to you you cannot run from it am i talking to somebody here the grace you are looking for man to tap into sir is embedded in the world any man that neglected the word neglects grace A lot of people are checking. Can I, can I preach this message? Let me tell you, don't get it wrong. Except the Lord said, go and meet my servant. Amen. Except the Lord command you to go and meet his servant. Go and meet Bishop David Oyedepo. Go and meet my son Paul Nature. Go and meet E.A. Adeboye. Go and meet my Smoro. Go and meet Ketrikuma. Go and meet Wigosword. Except the Lord said you should go. If you go, you will come back empty. Am I talking here? Because why? When you tap grace and you neglect the word, that grace will not be in view. It is the word that dispenses grace. He says, sanctify them by the truth, for the word is truth. In other words, when the man is not sanctified, grace cannot be in view. Am I talking to somebody here? So you must know the truth. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. Imagine a man who is a liar. He's running to go and meet Bishop David Oyelikpo to lay hands on his head. How can that thing work? It will not work. He said, can we continue seeing that grace will abound? He said, God forbid. Study for your life not to turn red. Study for you to be a grace dispenser. Sanctify them by the word. Why? The word is not. In other words, when you neglect the word, Grace 
we function in a less capacity very see very low very low very low very low now you will see everybody's listening now what are you listening to is it not the word of god as you are listening to this something is driving in your spirit and the more you listen to it the more you look like the word and because you look like the word you will act like god and because you are like god everything that comes into your mind cannot cannot be a negative mindset it will always be positive am i talking to somebody here give your neighbor a high five and say are you see here give your neighbor a high five and say are you see here let's bring it again hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 i draw my curtain close for today hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 hey father please help me ah where is honorable ike please give me a chair bring a chair one chair from the minister seat hebrew chapter 4 verse 16 i like all the ministers of god to come put it here we want to add a movie i believe this will drive it into your system more for that program it sit on this chair you sit good you be at this line you be at this row the way God showed it to me is the way I want to act it. Everybody, look at We are acting this scripture. He said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Who do you think this scripture was written for? It was written for you and I. Right. Everybody focus on the throne of grace. This is the throne of grace. Everybody just be on the line. Be on the line, sir. Be on the line. Everybody be on the straight line here. Be on the straight line. You just be praying. Just be praying. He said, look at it. We are acting. Look at the script carefully. He said, let us therefore come to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of our need. So they are here now. They want to obtain mercy in the throne of grace so that their needs can be met. Everybody be praying. Just be praying. Just. Sit down like king. Sit down, ah. Sit down like king. Yes. You are king. <laughs> you have been to Palahan. God bless you. I saw you. All these things I'm acting, I saw it by revelation. Come. You pray are praying, no? Just be praying. Look at her. Be praying. She's also in need. And before God now, just whisper to me, sir. He just whisper to me. All of them are praying, no? They have a need. Your needs are met. They are still praying. We are not trying to ridicule pastors. Amen. Do you know the reason why their owners not here be answered? No truth. She came. She has not served God the way these people have been serving God. God took her from church. He said, "Today now your day." She was at the back. Grace took her. Meet God one on one and said, "Your needs are met," but they are still laboring there. Truth is missing. They are laboring in prayer. These people are prayer machine. They can pray for 50 hours. No stop. They are still praying. And God is there. He didn't call me. And the angel that is sent to go and distribute gift. Call them before the throne of grace. They are before the throne of grace and nothing is happening. When truth is missing, grace is absent. Flash with the scripture. He said, let us now, dear, come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, we want to add another sin now. Now, everybody put your hand in your chest. A sober reflection. Everybody, minister, put it. Good. I'm not, did they, I did not bring them out to ridicule them. But we are here acting movie. Because <laughs> if I use you and I say, Pastor, you're not going to use me for better one. They will understand more better. I say, a bad one, I pass off one. Now, let me, and so I don't want to use you. So let me use people who understand, who have a clear understanding. Put your hand in your chest and begin to say, Lord, I'm sorry. Your knees are met. Go back to your seat. Now, they are all praying for mercy. Oh. The most genuine person that pray for it. Your knees are met. Your knees are met.
your needs are met. This man has been praying. He prayed. The Lord fed the heart prayer. He moved forward. A little promotion. But he cannot assess. Why? At the point of the throne of grace, he was distracted. Was distracted. Affairs of life. We vote. Make up. Just be praying. Make up. Wrist watch. Designers. Everything is, is, is looking at. It's looking at. It's looking. It's looking. He's looking at everywhere. He's still praying. He's still laboring. Meanwhile, please don't get me wrong. This man here is a spirit. His body crave after material things. But his spirit is saying, This is not where I'm supposed to be. Baba, beg. Help me. Baba, beg. Help me. Kalaga, shadabala. He's still before God. Nothing is being answered. He's still praying. Now, he has already gotten the key. And the voice came from the throne of grace. What is keeping you so long for you not to open up for me to find expression in you? The rest of your brothers has been answered and you are still before my throne. Please, don't get it wrong. This man has the greatest ministry above all of them. He is the one God is really interested about, but he has not been fully born again. Because he's not fully born again, God will not give him his needs. Because if he answered this man, now, nah, now, nah, we're not going to stand for church again. He not going to be like Jesus Christ. He not dead. He's still praying. 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 He has the greatest ministry. This man you see here is an apostle. The rest are pastors. The other woman is an evangelist. This man has the five foot ministry, but he's still distracted. Congregation he has is 12. He never grew. Why? If they take one and look material things, they take one and look spiritual. God needs the both eye, not one. He's still laboring in prayer. And the Lord now see from where he's sitting. You see, one thing. You see, let me tell you, your body can deceive you. It is the spirit of man that God uses as a lamp to search the heart. He's still praying. He's still praying. And the Lord has finally answered. Go down your knees, sir. Before the throne of grace, go down your knees. My son, now I can see your brokenness. All that you have been asking of me, Today, there is an announcement. Everything you need, all your needs has been met. Through you, nations shall be blessed. Please, don't forget. The Bible said, and the government of this world was upon his shoulder. Now, now, please take note of this. This is Jesus. He's no longer here on earth. Now he's handing over the garment of full of grace to this man. And the garment of this world shall be upon your shoulders. Stand up. From today. Whatever Jesus did here on earth, this man carried the capacity to do. Take the chair. I came to put the side to the church. Anyone that want to look down on you, as you rise up and give God amen, your life is blessed be. Your life is blessed be. You don't serve a dead God. Your time to be blessed is now. You don't serve a dead God. You are moving on a higher place. At that today, in the name of Jesus Christ, go and establish. Go and be blessed. Go and be announced. Go and become the king. Go and become the queen. Go and become the best. Go and become the best among the rest. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Somebody hallow me like a thunder. Everybody rise. Message don't finish. Everybody rise. Message don't finish. We don't have a letting message. I can't add that movie and add another story to it. That's the best of it you can ever say. One thing the Lord told me as a last two weeks Sunday, the Lord told me, he said, the church is sick. The reason why the church is sick, there are many of us, we have grief in our hearts. There are many of us, we, we are not too happy. 
because our expectation is not delivering the way it ought to be. There are many of us who just look at God and say, God, you they do pasha, oh, you they do God, if you they do pasha, you they do pasha, but you pasha too much. Sometimes you are talking to God based on the relationship that you have with Him. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. He said, On this mountain, everybody rise up. You are going to do what is called rebirth. What is your rebirth? Taking the old nature of me away and let the newness of you enter me. Church, praise the Lord. I'm Sister Celestina Ewodagi. I want to really enjoy all that. Just like the name of this church says, God's own house. God is indeed in this place. I want to testify on behalf of my brother. My brother traveled to Italy about seven years ago. So all this while he will go for document, they will turn him down. Go for document, he will they will turn him down. So at the time, he was now almost getting frustrated. So 2001, 21, 2021, about November, he called me as we were talking. When I saw the pain in his heart, I said, okay, don't worry. I will call, I will discuss with uh, my pastor, my spiritual father. He said, okay. So I called daddy, I explained that, and I said I should give him his number. So he later called me, he said he spoke with uh, daddy, that daddy said he's going to place him on three ninth prayer. So the first night he called, he said he was so surprised. So at about nine, daddy sent him a WhatsApp message reminding him that 12 o'clock. Oh. So by the time they finished the three ninth, uh, one, one hour VG, daddy now told him that the Lord said you should tell him that by May 2023, they will give him his paper. So, so he now told me, he said, ah, there is a problem. I said, what? He said himself and his lawyer, they have an appointment for document June 2022. And daddy is saying 2023. I said, ah, I don't know. This one is beyond me. So he now said, okay. So exactly, we started praying. We said, I said, God of uh, uh, 2023 is the same God of 2022. He said, okay. So that June 2022, they went for the interview. The judge looked at everything and now said there's a particular document that was not there. That they should go and put that one back in the paper. So he now joined the matter till November 2022. I said, okay, he came. I said, you've been waiting or you've been patient all this while. Papa has already told you that in 2023, everything will come up right. He now said, okay. So November 2022, they went for the uh, document something again. So he said for the first time, the judge was just smiling at him. That the judge was now the one asking them some questions concerning him. So he now answered. They now put the, this in that in six months time, that is when the result will come out. And six months from November happened to be May this year. <laughs> so I was so surprised. So I said, nothing God cannot do. The all night we that was had uh, this uh, last month, I was tired, I didn't want to come. Something I said, ah, ah, when you know this is May, any any you must claim it for your brother. And I said, okay, so I attended the all night. So when mama was saying, those uh, come out and sit uh, at the front here, yeah, you will testify first. I just told myself, I'm already seated at the front, so I will testify first. I was so surprised, Friday, um, Friday morning now, my brother was the first call I got that he has been given his residency paper. Hallelujah! <laughs> Prophecy of 2021. And Papa was so specific. The Lord told him, May. And May, it actually happened. Say, hey! 